TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live, so you can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like and comment. Subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if you do happen to miss a live, this is where all the highlights will be. If anybody knows how to make shorts and wants to be a part of this channel, contact me, let me know. Make some shorts and let's get it uploaded. Uh, don't forget, we do got the uh, Patreon. I just recorded Misfits, Misfits Season 4, Episode 8. Pretty good. And we also got the Discord, man. Tomorrow, I'm going to go live and just do Discord. I'm going to go down my Discord all day, every day. That's what I'm going to do. I mean, tomorrow, not all day, every day. All day, tomorrow. Have you seen the video with Cameron came to the UK years ago? Oh, Cameron. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Uh, let's get into this, though, man. Basic workers' rights, British versus UK. I haven't worked a legitimate job in America in like five or four years. I don't, so I don't. Go to Wix.com. But I might have to go back to work, man. I need some more money. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Might have to get that back going. Growing up in the States, I had to show up to work regardless of how sick I was. I mean, unless I was absolutely dying, and even then I had to call around to find replacements, which is why I'm not really surprised about this recent CNN report saying, many Americans show up to work very sick regardless of how far along Omicron is now spreading. Doesn't surprise me in the slightest. If you're from any other country and you're like, why the heck are Americans like that? Strap yourselves right on in. Today's video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the differences between US and UK culture in regards See, that's the thing about me, you know what I'm saying? If I, if I say I'm sick and I'm not coming in, I'm not coming in and I'm sick, period. <laughs> You're not going to tell me, uh, find a replacement. No, I'm not the manager. You're the manager. You find the replacement. I'm, I'm sick trying to get my health in order. I don't, I don't get paid to find a replacement. Who are you talking to? See, and that's why I haven't worked. You know what I'm saying? Leaving work and work benefits. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Evan Ed And well, re wanted to know more about in the UK. And also, right. no matter how sick I was, when I was working at a Pizza Hut, a food service restaurant, I was expected to show up to work or find a replacement, which is something that most people in the UK, when I told them this, said, well, isn't that what the hiring manager is supposed yeah. to do? Uh, yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. He should be the one kind of balancing. Why is it down to the individual employee? Well, it's because when you're sick in the US, that is actually your fault. You're guilty of this and you need to pay the company back by doing another job and finding someone else to replace. That's just the culture. Whereas because I was brought up- Man, hell no. Like this, my first couple jobs in the UK, I showed up incredibly ill during days in which I was sick and was told to go home, which blew my mind. What do you mean? What? I already showed up, I'm <laughs> coughing all over the place, but I, I got up to work to do right. No, I was sent home and I could get healthy. What? But one of the most interesting aspects of this whole thing was that I was paid. What's crazy is in America, you get like, well, I worked at the Marriott, I got like sick days not paid. I got sick days and I only got like five days. So out of a 365 day year, I was only expected to get sick five days. for when I was sick, which was the first time I'd ever experienced that. And most Americans will tend to agree, what happens is when you are ill and you have to ask the boss for the day off because you are sick, a lot of times that comes out of holiday pay. Holiday. Holiday. You see, most UK companies have something in place for this, in the inevitable likelihood that an employee is sick. If you do get sick for longer than three days, the government actually can step in and ensure you get a little bit under 100 pounds per week plus whatever your employer agrees to give you until you get better, which is a nice little thing to fall upon. Now, in the sad circumstance- That's mad, mad nice of them. <laughs> I think I got one paid sick day off. I think one paid in like five, five sick days. Them bitches was not paid. I could remember that vague, like very, very, very clearly. Since you are sick for a very long time, you can go to get a doctor's note, but as we have nationalized healthcare, that doesn't cost anything. On the other hand, 
In the US, the land of the free, there is no federally mandated sick pay. So regardless of if you're sick for one day, one week, one month, you are unpaid for the most part, which isn't really the best situation. See, I think I got paid one. I, it, it might not have even been none. And especially if you're someone that is living paycheck to paycheck, which as of March, 2022 is 64% of Americans, nearly two out of every three Americans is living paycheck to paycheck. I don't really think you can blame someone for going to work when they're ill, if financially they're just playing the cards that they've been dealt as best as they can. Also, given the fact that a lot of American employers demand a doctor's note if you are ill for more than one or two. And the doctor's note does not excuse you. Like I was, I had doctor's notes and I was still getting like a write up for ha taking X amount of days off. Bro, I'm sick. What y'all want me to do? Come get the rest of the employees sick? Like, and then we all have to close the building? Like, what y'all want me to do? Two days, which is then an entire extra day you need to take off to go to your doctor. And if you don't have great insurance, for instance, when I was working at different retail restaurants and things, well, that's 75 bucks a session. So now I've lost essentially a day or two's wages, plus I'm freaking ill still and I have to heal. <laughs> it's, it's just not a good situation. And the thing about this issue is it's really not political in the slightest. In fact, 94% of self-identified liberals and 81% of self-identified conservatives agree that paid sick days should be a basic human worker right. But then if such a huge grouping of these two sides that usually war all the time finally agree on it, why do we not have any change? Well, there's an even bigger percentage of corporations and employers that really don't give a shit about what you think. And well, they have a lot of money in the- and, and when you're in the corporate world, man, no matter what job you got, unless you like some crazy, crazy individual, it, it, and even at that, you're, unless you own a company, you're always, you're always replaceable. And I don't know how people can live with that uncertainty, man. Like if I do one thing wrong, I'm gone. Like, what are you serious? <laughs> Like, like they don't be caring about, yo, you don't care if you got kids. They don't care if you got rent paid to pay. They do not care. That's why I couldn't. So you got to take your own financial situation into your own hands. Yes, I might have to go back to work. Yes, I might need a job for like for a little bit because, you know, I'm still trying to adjust to Florida and things of that nature. And, you know, what I'm saying not enough people are, you know, watching commercials from my videos. So it's like, <laughs> Uh, but you know, never the They'd like to keep it that way. And so they've successfully lobbied to ensure that no change has happened. Does that sound familiar to any other part of the US law? Almost all of it, actually. Yes, it's sad. And sadly, as is the case in most of these things, the people with the largest amount of money have the largest voice in US politics and so can shout down the massive majority of people who just want this basic right so that they can have more money. You know, a lot of people don't even like, like Aiden Ross. Remember y'all seen Aiden Ross when he said, Oh man, damn! Can I even say his name on here? Doesn't matter. Remember, he said um, the lowest, the lowest, the lowest, a the average income for America was a hundred k. Like, is he out of his fucking mind? If I was making one hundred thousand dollars a year, tr trust me, when I was in Chicago, I made one twenty a year, and then I moved to Florida, and you know, I'm trying to do something different. So it's like, mm, but it's like. You know. Which is, of course, the American dream. Now, given that this is the sad state of affairs, most Americans have found a loophole on how to have paid sick leave. And sadly, you probably know where this is going. Well, it comes out of their holiday pay. One of the reasons why Americans don't travel or go on holiday as much as anyone else in Western civilization, well, they use them for sick days. Now, regardless of whether or not- Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Okay, so we got sick days. I think I got like five sick days, but in order to get them paid, I would have to write in my holiday. That's ridiculous. Not you get paid time off during your next trip abroad or to the local shops. Today's video sponsor, Revolut, can actually help you world for all things money. Spending safe, massive disc spending. Revolut away this month and excellent exchange rates. I need me some paid sponsorships, man and no hidden fees. And even better, any 20 pound for sponsoring today's video, Americans don't travel as much as many of their European counterparts. And a lot of Americans will say, well, it's because the country is so big and there's not many places to visit outside of like Mexico and Canada. Just my ass, it's hella places to visit, I'm gone. As soon as I get my passport, I'm out here. I'm, I'm probably gonna, I'm honestly, I'm, a car, I'm trying to come to the UK for like two months. I don't even want to be here. Like, you know? But usually as soon as somebody makes this argument, oh, 
Australia enters the chat. But it has more to do with the fact that there are no federal protections for holiday pay in the States at all. I don't know how many times I've told this story on this channel, but I'll tell it again. I worked five years at a pizza hut working 30 hours a week and I earned zero days paid holiday. Whereas I worked under 20 hours in London and managed to get two days a month. I was blown away with how I was able to earn anything, considering that I'd worked five years and hadn't even gotten a single raise from my $2.13 an hour they were paying me. Somehow, legally, they didn't have to. How was that legal though? Well, federally, there aren't any laws about holiday pay. The government thought it'd be better to just leave that up to the employers. And as we all know, employers always have the best intentions. They don't. Yeah. Now my state decided to have it so that once you work over a certain amount of time, in my case 30 hours, you are entitled to some paid holiday. However, they made it a step function, meaning you have to cross over that threshold of 30. There isn't a gradual increase like, say, the way we pay taxes. And so that's just going to allow capitalistic companies to be capitalistic companies to ensure I never was allowed to work over 33 hours a week just so they could make sure I averaged out under that and they would never ever have to pay me a single day of paid holiday. That's ridiculous. See, I'm so Marriott is a little different, man. I, I still, I like working at for the Marriott. If I go back to work, and if I'm forced to go back to work, that's the I, I will go back to them for part time. First of all, I got a lot of experience working at a Marriott. Because of the Marriott, I can work any job across the board. You know, any job, I'm qualified to work anything because of that. Um, but they they did stuff a little differently, like when it came to pay. And I give them that. They, 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 they gave you holiday days because they didn't give you sick. So you was required to work. If you were full-time, you work 40 hours a week. And you got overtime, which is time and a half. And you got, um, and you got, and you got, what's it called? You got, uh, and you got holiday pay. Like, every, I think, if you work 40 hours, you get, Two hours of or two or three hours of pay, holiday pay per per forty hours or something like that. And keep in mind, when I was working at Marriott, I was making twenty three dollars an hour. This was this was this was this was five years ago. I was at Marriott making twenty three dollars an hour. That's crazy, right? Five years ago, making twenty three dollars an hour. Don't forget the state tax is crazy out in Chicago. But if I was making twenty three dollars right here in in, in Florida. What? Man, I, yo, I'd be dark. I'd be getting like five bands a month. Nah, not like five, like 4,500. That's not, that's, I, see, that's the type of, like, I can't, I just, it was the, it wasn't Marriott. It was who they had working there. Like the GM for where I worked, she was a mis, she was miserable. You could tell she wasn't getting no D at home. You can tell her husband was probably cheating on her. Like, she would come to work and just take it out and just be miserable at work. Like, I just, like, go stop coming here. Like, you make it terrible for everybody. Because that's just trickling down. Like, like you don't think your mood affects your the people that work for you in, in your day-to-day -day job? Like, of course it does. You say, if you have a manager, if you have a manager, you're the GM, and the managers are running the front desk, and you have a talk with them and you and you giving them attitude you don't think they're going to come give the front desk workers and everybody that works under them attitude like come on bro damn that's just what companies are going to do keep that shit at home bro keep it at home you better come to work with a smile on your face if i had a fake smile so do you if you let them do that, that's the point of government, to step in and give people the basic rights that they are entitled. I had a friend that worked at Google in the UK and got 30 days of paid holiday, moved to the US, and lost half of them. Because, well, 15 days, that's quite a lot in the US. Well, in the UK, we are mandated to have at least 28 days of paid holiday. That's 5.6 weeks of paid yeah. holiday, including bank holidays. If an employer wants to, they can give you more than that or less, but that's just how it is. Though, to be fair, the US Department of Labor has said that 76% of private sector employees got- Damn, you just got five ads? I didn't press it. Cause you know, you can control your ads on here. I didn't press it. So I guess they do it for you after a certain amount of time. Paid holiday, and the average of that was 10. 
That's tough. Sub up. <laughs> well, as there's no federal law, employers don't have to, and so they won't unless they're forced to, which is why it's good that in certain states, they actually have. In states like Vermont, for every 52 hours you work, you get one hour of paid holiday. And for those of you that enjoy math, that means that working 40 hours a week in the state of Vermont, every single week, at the end of the year, you earn five days of paid holiday. 40 hours. Yeah, see, it was something like that for Marriott, too, in Chicago. But I think it was like, for, for every 40 hours, we just get like, oh, shit, damn, you really subbed up, true. <laughs> Shout out there. That's horrible. And of those five days, if we know that the average American is sick 3.9 days of the year and they don't get paid sick days, well, of those five days in Vermont, you've got one left if you've got an average amount of sickness. Congratulations, where are you gonna go? Dorney Park? It's a bit far. <laughs> and all of these things together really show how the culture is in terms of when you ask your boss for a day off in the US and they act as if, even though you're fully entitled to it, you're hurting them and you are doing them a disservice to take the holiday that you're legally allowed to have in certain states. It's just such a weird contract. Why they used to act like we was pulling teeth to get a day off. As to countries like Germany in which their employers force them to go on holiday because they understand that a well-rested employee is going to be a better one, make better decisions and be happier in general. Facts. I mean, the UK isn't the greatest thing, but I'm thankful that we do have those 28 days of paid holiday so that people can take off, people can enjoy their lives and not just work every single day of their lives. Now, as a quick asterisk here, there are some companies in the US and the UK that both employ this new magical thing called unlimited time off. Unlimited paid holiday. That sounds like a dream. I was offered a job like this once and that was the- I feel like, I feel like if that was an option, people wouldn't take advantage of it. Like people would like, they would have to get acclimated to that. Like, damn, I got unlimited, man. I'm gonna take this, 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 this. But eventually they'd be like, damn, I got unlimited. I ain't gotta rush it. Let me just slow down and let me really use these when I get it out of use them. The first thing I had a question about, I went, how does that work? Unlimited time off, I can just take off? And he was like, yeah, you, you have unlimited as opposed to like 28 days or 29, you have unlimited. So I said, so I'm just gonna get hired and then just start going on holiday. And he went, well, you do have to make sure that you, you work enough, like you feel like you've gotten enough done. And I was like, well, that's not unlimited then, now is it? Now, truth be told, I did go on holiday way more than any other employee, but I was a rare case. In fact, the whole concept of unlimited paid holiday, it is found means that people take off less because they don't realize how much they have. If you have yeah, 28 days and you've spent 14, by the end of the year, sometimes you wanna just make sure you spend those final days. If it's unlimited, you don't actually have an end limit. And so most people will spend less. So there it is. Companies give a mental thing. giving you something that looks like it's beautiful. It is a Trojan horse. It's actually so you take off less. Classic capitalism. Now, obviously sometimes. Yeah, me, me, I was a partier. I'm taking off. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna make it today. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, there's been a, there's been a, there's been an unaliving in the family. <laughs> I'm just playing. And people die. Wow, we're getting real dark. Bereavement leave is something that you would really expect at the end of the day for both countries to have, but they don't. The UK does have a law, however, if you do lose a dependent, which I'm thankful does include things like housemate, which the US's does not, but if you do lose, a dependent in the UK, the law states you're to be given a reasonable amount of time off to grieve. Reasonable. That, that's the law. You must be reasonable. And it's odd that this type of thing just works in the UK. In the law, it says, be reasonable. In the US, that's not, I don't think that would ever work. As much as I don't really feel protected by a clause saying it has to be reasonable, in the UK, they do kind of follow through with that most of the time. In the US though, the only thing we really have is the Family and Medical Leave Act, which allows for 12 weeks of leave protected, unpaid leave which is good. You can come back to your job at the end of it and ta-da, you've still got it. However, there's so many asterisks Unpaid. revolving around this FMLA or My Life America Act. There's a big chance it doesn't even apply to you to get this unpaid leave and you're going to have to work regardless of what you're going through. Do you work for a company with fewer than 50 people? Well, congratulations. You do not qualify. You have to keep working through your grief. Did one of your loved ones wait to pass away until after you got your new job? 
You're also not entitled to any leave protected unpaid leave. Nope, you've got to come to work grieving because you have to stay at the same company for at least a year before that can happen. Which is a reason why I'm assuming most people are afraid to leave jobs because that transitionary period, there are so many benefits the government is no longer giving you. So if you work for a company with fewer than 50 people or you've recently- Yeah, man, that's crazy. I remember my, uh, somebody passed away when I was working at the, when I was working, I'm telling you. And they, they, like, I couldn't get the day off. I had to call off. And to, for it to be excused, they wanted to see the obituary. I'm like, damn, y'all asking for way too much. Like, that's personal. Like, no. You can't have a cop, no. Huh. Fuck. And they ended up, like, giving it to me. But it was like, no, oh, y'all asking for way too much. Why does it even have to be, like, this big old thing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why do you need the obituary? Like, no. You need proof? Like, who, who lot? Like, no. It's just a no from me, like. Recently switched jobs, the FMLA just does not apply to you. And in fact, on the official website for the FMLA, it states, if you know ahead of time that you'll be taking leave for a new child or a planned medical treatment for yourself or a family member, you are required to give your employer 30 days advance notice. In the case of planned medical treatment, you must try to schedule the medical treatment when it will not unduly disrupt your employer's business. So next time you plan on being sick or plan on having someone die or birthed or anything else, planet else make sure it does not inconvenience your employer that is in the u.s law and so the difference here being that in the uk employers are asked to give a reasonable time off to their employees when they're going through grief and in the u.s employees are asked to give their employer reasonable time off when the employee is going through grief it's just a country for that said, what type of benefits would you get if you worked at a tlo court the same ones i get shit Pop up when you feel like it, just get what you need to do done. Shit. The rest is on you. The haves, not the have nots. The employees have so little protection, you have to ask for permission for one of your relatives to die. What the f And the last of the big leaves we're gonna be talking about today, the big one, the elephant in the room. No offense to your mother, but maternity leave and paternity leave. What was that segue? We've all seen the map before. The fact that the US has zero days of paid maternity leave is still disgusting. How it's not protected at all is disgusting. In the UK, employees can take up to 52 weeks of maternity leave and their jobs are protected for when they come back. And of those 52 weeks, the first six are paid at 90% of their salary. The next 33 are paid at 90% or £156.66, whichever is smaller. And then the next weeks are actually unpaid. But of that period, you still have your- 52 weeks? How many, how many weeks are in a year? I feel like that's a whole year. Like, like in in America, where I, where I worked at least, a woman got three weeks. So so a year. So a woman got three weeks. I'm talking about push a baby out, push a placenta out, maybe get your booty stitched up, and then have to be back at work in three weeks with a newborn at the crib. Who's watching the kid? Like that's crazy. I'm like, y'all wildin'. And I, but they actually did give men leave too, though, when, when the girls had a baby. But I think, I think it was like a one week or something. You're job protected, you still have some money coming in, and you can take care of your child during the moments in which it needs you most. Now, when it comes to paternity leave, the UK definitely falls flat here, only providing fathers with one to two weeks yes. of paid paternity leave. And of that, it's that £156.66 or 90% of your salary, whichever is smaller. But it is two weeks that you're allowed to take off, and you also get two prenatal appointments before the birth of your child. So if you need to take off to check on how the baby's doing in the mama's belly, you can do that. Now, when it comes to the US, do you remember that Family and Medical Leave Act we were talking about earlier? That's the only thing the US has in place for expectant mothers, unpaid leave. This means as soon as employees are finished going into labor, they need to go back into the labor force because there's no other way of affording to take care of that child. There's nothing there to protect them. And with just how expensive US hospital bills can be when it comes to having a child there, it's no surprise how many- Oh shit, damn, go back. Just how expensive you- According to data collected by Fair Health, the average cost of having vaginal delivery is between 5,000 and 11,000 in most states. The number higher in C-section with prices ranging from 75 to 40, 14.50. Yeah, I remember when I had my daughter, I seen the bill. I was, damn, who paying this? Can't be me. I was, y'all got the receipt? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> 
Uh, man, I think it was the. I think it was like sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars when I had my daughter. I was get the hell out of here. I was. I'm not. Who? Who? No, actually, I think it was like eleven. I think it was like eleven. But they was like, oh no, don't worry about it. The government take care of it. I was like, oh, it got to shit. Or else y'all would have been taking care of this bet. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing, Nank. If you watch this when you get older. U.S. hospital bills can be when it comes to having a child there. It's no surprise how many reports are coming out of mothers going back to work within a couple days after just having a child in America. So wrapping this up. Yeah, yeah, no cap. Yeah, I've seen women go back within a week. Up, sick pay, holiday pay, bereavement pay and maternity leave are basic workers' rights that people in the UK and around the world get to enjoy, whereas people in the US just don't. The only way an American worker can hope to get any of these basic workers' rights is if by chance their employer just happens to, out of the goodness of their heart, provide it, which doesn't happen very likely, which is why it's good to see that there's a large resurgence in the States of workers' unions coming back into fashion. Starbucks, Amazon, Apple, Everyone is fed up with the fact that they're not given the rights, the government isn't protecting them, and so people are demanding they protect themselves, forming unions and demanding the rights they deserve. How long did we have to put up with people clapping their hands for essential workers, and now that COVID is, for the most part, cut and dried, we're seeing people go, oh, well, you're not that essential, no pay raise for you. What, do you wanna get paid more than $15 to flip a burger? Well, considering the cost of living has gone up, yes. I think they do. It is really horrible that at the end of the day in the US, we have to fight for those basic freedoms at the bottom, but that's the case when people with a lot of money don't want things to change, and I don't think they do. Genuine question, do you think within our lifetime you will see the US government step in and provide these basic rights that every other country's citizens have had for many years? I'd like to be hopeful and say yes, but the way that most American politics say no. is run by money, it's looking very doubtful. But regardless of your stance on these different types of leave, leave me a comment. It was very informal to things that I knew, but I didn't know it was, you know, I just thought it was me they was harassing like this. <laughs> uh, man, if I have to go back to work, which I probably do, they're going to hate me. I ain't even going to lie to you. Tell leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.